Hello, welcome to my YouTube page. This is my stage one or entry level or um, starting tune for my 2001 Silverado 2500 8.1 liter in the Allison transmission. I'll be doing a quick tune of the uh, engine and transmission and utilizing HP tuners. And we'll go ahead and, uh, and start and just go a piece at a time. All right, so we're gonna start right out at the, uh, the engine tab, general number one. Um, I don't change a whole lot in this tune uh, because the uh, the only mods I've made to the truck are um, exhaust. I put a uh, Walker Dynomax exhaust on it and a Flowmaster twin three inch to a three and a half um, output uh, Y pipe on the uh, on the exhaust and then just a turn down after the Walker. So three and a half inch uh, Walker Dynomax. So it doesn't, the, the engine doesn't need a ton of uh, tuning, but mostly what I'll be doing is just pulling off the nanny controls. So general, I don't touch too much in here. Idle, RPM. I do move the uh, base set point up just a bit. As you can see here, um, 600 is, uh, in my opinion, kind of low. I just move them up. It seems to, the engine seems to run or just idle better with the uh, increase in RPM. Not mandatory or required, but that's just a personal uh, preference. Airflow, again, don't change much. I just put an exhaust on it. Um, not a whole bunch of uh, weird stuff. The um, throttle area, throttle area, electronic throttle, I don't mess with that either. Exhaust, I don't touch it very much. Fuel, so let's talk about Stosh, or however you say it. Um, usually this is 14.7, but since I live in Michigan, it's uh, I have 10% of my fuel um, is, is ethanol. So with 10% um, of the fuel being ethanol, uh, I bring my uh, Stosh down to like 14.0. It's a little on the rich side. Um, but tuning bigger or larger camshaft vehicles a little bit richer um, doesn't seem to hurt too many things unless you don't unless you get real wild. So my Stosh is chained changed to uh, 14.0. O2 sensor sensors don't mess with that. I do to go to my power enrichment though I will increase that um, the delay RPM I switch that to zero so I can get power enrichment at any RPM I choose instead of waiting. Um, the enrichment ramp in 1.25. You see the variable at the bottom of uh, HP tuners here is zero to four. I've you know I've seen them as high as like 1.5, 1.7. So for boosted applications, 1.25 works good for me. Uh, EQ ratio. So your uh, power enrichment. So if you have a uh, specific number that you want your, uh, when you put your foot in it to, uh, for the air fuel ratio to go to, such as 12.5 or 13 or 11.0 or, or uh, whatever you choose, what you'll do is you'll go ahead and take the, um, your Stosh, which I changed my Stosh to 14.0, and then you divide that by what your uh, air fuel ratio that you want it to be and so mine is 12.7 that's just the number I chose and yet it looks like the uh, the multiplier is 1.10 so my EQ ratio what this number does is it will take the um, the 14.0 that I placed in the um, back at the Stosh and divides it by 1.10 and therefore it comes out with approximately 12.7 and so that is the air fuel ratio that the uh, computer will target to um, uh, for power enrichment cut off um, DFCO in gear I changed my fuel cutoffs um, to 5500 probably shouldn't spin my stock big block much above 5,500 um, for you know personal reasons or reliability reasons. So, uh, but I did up these from the uh, stock numbers, which were 5,500, and the park neutral was only 3,250. And so, when you want to you know look cool and do a free rev, and it cuts out at 3,200, then that that doesn't work real good. So, 
Lean fuel savings, transient. All right, let's move right to Spark. Now I don't mess with the uh, Spark maps very much with the uh, uh, versus the the stock. They're pretty much sparked quite a bit uh, from the factory, heavily sparked at least in my experience. So the only thing I do is I go ahead and cut out the um, uh, add-ins, Spark add-ins, um, due to uh, due to uh, intake air temperature and then the uh, the fuel corrections. I just um, I think it's easier when you're data logging to understand what the Spark is doing if you don't have a bunch of adders and subtractors. Um, activating without your authority to do so. So spark retard limit. This is the minimum spark that the, the engine will um, be allowed to have. So here it shows that uh, the, computer, the computer can command up to a negative 20 spark, uh, negative 20 degrees of spark on your engine. And so um, I set it at 10. Uh, I don't think that uh, the spark should go below uh, 10 degrees of spark. So, first knock retard. So, this is the um, anticipated knock. The computer can anticipate knock and then pull spark depending on um, how violent it believes or it thinks or interpolates the spark is going to or uh, the knock is going to be so it pulls spark based on that so the um what i've done is just set this to the uh, uh the maximum amount of uh, uh, grams of air so um, without going into a long discussion on this set it to the max and it won't pull um, um uh, spark based on uh, burst knock Again, RPM, I set those at zero, so don't pull any spark uh, because you believe, because the computer believes someday, somehow, some way that there's going to be knock. Torque management, this is a lot of the, the nanny controls, which I was uh, referring to earlier. Maximum torque versus RPM. So this is the uh, torque values when the, uh, um, the engine computer reads how much torque the engine is, is producing. Um, it will limit it to these values, and I've uh, went ahead and maxed it out. I don't want, um, I mean, I want full power all the time. So max torque here again, 640 foot-pounds, which is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the max for that, uh, that variable. Oops, stay there. Tip in torque. You can see that this is quite a uh, uh, difference. Um, I if I tip in, in other words, when I start the throttle pedal in motion, um, I don't want to be limited to how much power can be applied in each gear. I want all of it immediately, and so I went ahead and listed this at uh, 600. Trans output max. I've just maxed that out versus the uh, uh, max variable. Prop shaft and rear prop shaft are all maxed out. So ETC, TPS max, so electric uh, throttle control, uh, throttle position max versus RPM. This is going to, um, going to limit the amount of torque that's being delivered by a throttle percentage. So again, I want it all. So 100% wherever, um, wherever I put my foot in it, I want 100% of the power. Again, spark retard versus torque reduction. This reduces torque um, by, um, it, it limits the amount of torque that's going into the transmission. And so um, it pulls that, that, uh, that amount of uh, uh, spark retard. So turn that off. Torque management engine and then abuse mode. I went ahead and turned abuse mode off anyway. So that'll take care of the engine side of town. Jump over to transmission. Full throttle enable. This is when the transmission believes that, uh, that you have full throttle. This is set quite high. 
um, from the factory if uh, your um, throttle position has to be 94% before you get the full uh, full throttle um, shift scheduling of the transmission. So I went ahead and swapped that out for um, something a little bit more aggressive. Um, this seems to work good for me. Change it as, as you see fit. The, um, the enable throttle position sensor, the lower you make this variable, the quicker your transmission will go into full throttle uh, shift scheduling mode. So uh, <clears throat> um, I had this pretty low earlier and it was in full throttle mode all the time, which was, was kind of fun, but it was kind of annoying as well. So I've upped it up to 60 and 55% disables that, uh, that full throttle um, activation. Shift pressures, I went to the max pressure. This was set at 90. I just upped it to 95 because it's the max. It's just one under the max variable that I can uh, put on there. Up shift. The base shift pressures, I just increased these by 25% to start out with. So I multiplied the whole um, uh, global variables by, uh, you know, 1.25 and uh, just increased it a bit just to feel get a start on it without getting too wild I did the same thing for the performance and I'm very happy with the 25% increase this is a uh, pressure modifiers by uh, transmission oil temperature um, 99 degrees and it pulls um, pulls six was it six pounds of torque it looks like yeah, so, or PSI, you know, there's a lot going on there, and I don't know if I'd be pulling um, pressure out of my transmission until it got over the operating range. So, again, I just zero those variables out, and then I can work backwards from there if I decide that I don't like it. Downshift, I didn't touch. Adaptive, I didn't mess with either. Shift timing, you know... I've seen shift times down to like 0.1 or 0.01 or, or whatever. Um, quarter of a second has always worked good for me in all the different uh, applications that I've tuned for transmissions. So I just go with 0.250. That's normal. Same with normal. And then I, re I got rid of the adders, um, which would add shift time to it. And again, I don't want anything adding or subtracting from the... Uh, from the parameter I'm trying to tune um, unless I see fit after like a test run or a year's worth of uh, driving. So performance again, same thing, I set it at a quarter, 0.25 of a, a second, which works just fine, and no adders there. Torque converter, I really like the truck the way it drives, um, the torque converter lockup, the scheduling is just fine with me. The apply and release scheduling, it's it works, it's a, it's a truck that tows so torque management desired torque this is another nanny um, variable that uh, could reduce the amount of uh, 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 torque so I set it at the max variable abuse mode went ahead and disabled that by saying it has to be over 8,000 rpm throttle position has to be over 99 percent and over 200 miles per hour and then the amount of torque reduction is zero so there's nothing in there that would um, affect performance. Torque reduction versus torque and shift. Okay, so then here's your shift scheduling, one to two shift, um, and your foot pounds and how much um, torque it's going to cut out of your shift. So it's uh, so if you've you got your foot in it and you've got 400 foot pounds of torque going through your transmission, it's going to cut 40% of that torque um, going to the transmission. So I don't like that. I went ahead and reduced those all to 10%, um, and I'm very happy with the with the performance of the truck. Again, in the performance range, same deal. All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up for a quick and dirty explanation of uh, a stage tune or entry level tune. I've had the tune in the truck for about a year. It's been reliable. It shifts firm. Um, but not smack your head into the back window type shifting. Um, the engine is quite a bit more alive um, and it's, we didn't have to touch the uh, spark values, just increase, increase the, the, the rate of enrichment when I go into PE mode. So great truck. It's a whole lot of fun after this.
Thanks again for watching.